INEC heads to Supreme Court as it kicks over appeal court ruling on relisting 22 political parties initially deregistered. And the director of MURIC is accused of receiving money from terrorist group. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladeinde. Welcome to Plus Politics. Barely hours after the Court of Appeals sitting in Abuja reversed a ruling by a lower court upholding the deregistration of 22 political parties by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, the commission has concluded plans to approach the APIS court over the issue. The appellate court had held that INEC failed to follow due process while deregistering the parties and ordered INEC to release the 22 parties out of 74 parties deregistered. Joining us to discuss this is the Chief Press Secretary to INEC Chairman, Mr. Rotimi Oyekami. Good evening, Mr. Oyekami. Good evening. Uh, thank you for having me. And good to have you. And also joining us in this conversation is the presidential candidate in the last presidential election of uh, Abundant Nigerian Renewal Party, Mr. Tokwe Fasua. Good evening, Mr. Fasua. Good evening, uh, uh, you know, and it's good to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Good. Let me start with uh, Mr. Oyekomi. I Ordinarily, what we're used to is to see INEC just obey court order with, with little or no hesitation. But it was quite uh, it's more of news to us this time around to see INEC approach the APES court. What is the issue? Thank you very, very much. Um, we received uh, the latest judgment of the Court of Appeal. But interestingly, we had another judgment by the Abuja Division of the Court of Appeal, which was contrary or conflicting in nature with the one we received yesterday. And because we cannot pick and choose, we then decided to approach the Supreme Court to settle the matter. And what is the matter? In the previous Court of Appeal judgment, the judgment said INEC was right in deregistering the political parties in obedience to Section 225A of the Constitution, the, the uh, amendment. This current one said, that we should reinstate. So it's a direct conflict. That's why we said, since the two courts are courts of appeal, let us go to the higher court, which is the Supreme Court, to get a proper interpretation, and then the decision has to be arrived at. OK, I'll come back to that. Let me quickly uh, get the perspective of Mr. Fasua. Uh, I was actually looking at the list, and I was looking for ANRP. Maybe in the first place, it wasn't even the registered. Uh, but beyond the position of ANRP, what do you think as a player in this whole project? Right, thank you very much. Uh, now, the issue is that, um, you know, we also, we, I mean, ANRP, we, we instituted our own case separately uh, from the group that um, got a judgment yesterday. They went ahead of us, they, you know, and there's been a bit of confusion here and there, but at least they got that judgment. Um, our case has been instituted in the same federal high court in Abuja, uh, in front of uh, Justice Amuli uh, Chikere, I think. And um, it's coming up for hearing uh, uh, October 18, thereabout. Now, this appeal court judgment gives us a lot of verve and gives us a lot of confidence that we're also going to get uh, judgment. Now, INEC is uh, approaching the Supreme Court. It's actually a waste of about Nigeria taxpayers' money, if you ask me, because ordinarily speaking, a government organization, which is the uh, appeal court, gives a judgment, uh, you know, a, a, that a, a, another government organization, which is INEC, should comply with the rule of law. Uh, and it was clear that your uh, action was illegal and also did not follow due process. Why are you wasting Nigeria's money, uh, Nigeria taxpayers' money approaching the Supreme Court? I don't understand. You should. Uh, we uh, are also standing on the same grounds because we said that the same Section 225 is clear. 
And Section 225 does not confer impunity, even as amended, does not confer impunity on INEC to do and undo, to act on their own whims and caprices, and not to communicate duly with the political parties. So they, I said it, you know, I've been on, on air since this thing happened. I've written more than 10 different articles. They treated us like vermin. They treated us like rubbish. And wow. we would not take it. So a very this is the word. blowback that and I Mr. First one, let, let me, me stay let with you know you. very quickly. Let me that, stay with you why, why, before I go back to uh, Mr. Oyekomi. I know you will want to respond uh, to some of your uh, comments. But let's look at it. What is wrong when you have two courts of coordinate jurisdiction giving conflicting judgment and you go to the higher court in clarifying issue? Well, well, then you can actually, you see, like I said, it's a waste of Nigeria taxpayers' money because you can actually compare these two courts, okay, fine, they may be both appeal courts. The, the judgment that was read yesterday was read by the, by the chairman of the appeal court of Nigeria. The, the president, you the mean? The lady chairman that was instituted recently, okay. number one. Uh, number two, the decision was five to zero. Ordinarily speaking, in Supreme Court, three, three uh, judges will sit. Five judges sat, and five of them unanimously agreed that what INEC did was totally full of impunity. And look, we have to just commend the judiciary that at some point they stand up to, to, to say, do you know what damage INEC has done to these 74 political parties since February? Do we, uh, do we deserve it? Okay. You made us go into, they made us go into this believing that we, we were going to have a fair fair playing ground. Now you damage the, 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 okay. the, 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 the licenses and the franchises that you give us. And then you, don't, you don't do things like that. This country must change at some we'll point. We'll come back time. to you, Mr. Faswa. Let, let me quickly get to Mr. Oyekomi. Uh, he used the word that you gave them the franchise and you collected it from them. Can you explain that? Thank you very much. Uh, I can understand the passion expressed by the other gentlemen. Um, on the face of it, it will look as if uh, it's a form of victimization, but it is not victimization. This has to do with the Constitution. There was a false alteration to the Constitution of this country. And in that fault alteration, certain parameters were introduced uh, as to the requirement political parties must fulfill to remain registered. And what INEC did was to apply those rules, and out of 91 political parties, only 16 we have found to have complied with those requirements. And what are these requirements? I will just quickly go through them. You know, the fourth alteration says, and I quote, that breach of any requirement for registration as political parties is enough to deregister political parties. In addition, failure to win at least 25% of the votes cast in one state of the federation in a presidential election, or 25% of the vote cast in one local government area of a state in a governorship election, or failure to win at least one ward in a chairmanship election, or failure to win one seat in the national or state assembly election, or one seat in a councillorship election. Now, what did INEC do? The general election took place in 2019. Somehow, the FCT is the only entity where the commission is allowed to conduct local council elections. Now, there was like a mixture of both the federal uh, capital territory election and the general election. So we had a good ground for measuring the performance of all the political parties against the yastic prescribed by the constitution. And that was what we did. General elections take place every four years. And every four years, we are going to go over these rules again and apply these rules as, as they apply to each political party. And after all the assessments, we discovered that only 16 political parties did not fulfill the requirement. Um, only 16 political fulfilled. parties fulfilled the requirement. 75 didn't. But somehow, at, in February, when we announced the deregistration, one of the political parties had gone to court and obtained a restraining order against the commission. So we could not take action against that political party. So that was why we deregistered 74 political parties. But of course, I can understand. On the face of it, those who were deregistered felt that uh, what we did was wrong. But I think that the issue is, and I've suggested this several times, that 
they need to go back to the National Assembly. And that is where the action took place. And blaming INEC is just uh, okay. like blaming the wrong person. Okay. The constitution states X, Y, Z, and that's what we did. Okay, Mr. Yekomi. Now, if you're saying we cannot deregister, you agree we can register. But when the constitution says we should do something, what should we do? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Mr. Fasua, you can uh, take it from there. Very quickly, very quickly, um, very clearly, let me say, we agree that INEC has a right to, to register and to deregister a party. What we don't agree with is that INEC would wake up with the whims and caprices and, you know, use impunity to take the party and disenfranchise party. What we don't agree with is that some officers of INEC up to commissioner level, especially the commissioner in charge of communication, will go to the TV and say some parties are small, some parties cannot survive. There are going to be five parties at the end of the day. He has absolutely no right and he should stand in court to defend those statements he has made. Look, my party is not only in court asking for re de uh, for re-registration. We don't even believe we are uh, deregistered. And my party is in court even claiming damages from INEC to say, listen, you gave us a certain... Look, we, we are in a contractual relationship with INEC. You gave us an impression. You gave us a certificate. It's just like going to CAC to collect a certificate. You could give us a certificate that we can continue in the business of politics. You wake up one day, just like CAC waking up, not communicating with a, a registered company and then removing their license. You have to have a basis. Look, we, we don't have do much business with the National Assembly, which is anyway populated by people who belong to large so-called parties, including the ruling party, who connive in trying to insert this amendment in the constitution in 2017 or 2018 there about the and they got the president to accept assent to it surreptitiously now the point is that as according to what mr rotimi read just now you will see that the third and fourth item was very clear it says if you don't win so 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 at presidential level or state level or local, local government, government level or councillor level it it was categorical in the analysis of what you need to achieve he did not say that after a certain General election must have been connect, collect, uh, conducted, conducted by, by INEC. Listen, I'm from Undo State. I'm from Undo State. I take it personal that even if you wanted me to win a 25% in the local government or in some ward, you have, you have disenfranchised me from Undo State by not allowing me to take part in the elections in Undo State. That's it, for the it, local the government election. Constitution is concerned with Nigeria as a whole. It's not concerned with FCT. The Constitution did not mention uh, something, something FCT. And that's what the judges of the Court of Appeals saw. Okay, I Mr. Fasua. I was going to put all the resources of my party in on Mr. those Fasua. states. Let it be so. That's Mr. Fasua, point. please, please. I, I, I want us to get it much clearer to people. Uh, let's look at uh, the 22 parties. Uh, thank God, INEG is only, they are yet to go to court. So we can still discuss the merit of the appeal court. Why did it take just 22 out of the 74? Is it not a case of probably INEC erred, according to the court, they erred by not allowing this party to go through these three stages. What do you think was wrong with the remaining uh, um, parties out of the 74 no, no. that were not asked to be released? There? I could tell you. I could tell you that I'm the treasurer of IPAC National, okay? Okay. So at some point, they were putting well, they were putting money together to say who's going to go, who's going to go. And they were asking people to send their party um, documents, like their uh, licenses, uh, you know, so that we can all go to court. About 35 of them put up. But I think there was actually a mix-up. Initially, if you see that the first judgment uh, that was obtained was actually um, for 35 or so parties. Unfortunately, my party could not meet up with that one at that point in time, even though, well, that's between us in IPAC, okay? But, uh, but I believe that even the, the case that we have instituted can lean on the judgment that has been received by the Court of Appeal, even though we're still at the Federal High Court. And we're, we're in front of a very, you know, a judge, the same woman that sat on the case of uh, uh, Shoure, I believe that she's a very stern woman. She's going to do things the right way. And again, like I said, we decided to distinguish our case not only to ask for re-registration, because look, we're not refrafs. We're not refraff. We will not listen. Up. So my party NRP were full of private sector people, people who have worked in, in oil sector, in banks, and all of those things. We won't take we will be slapped black and blue okay. by INEC. You know, have, look, even if it's okay, now, we I think you have, party, you, have, you have answered my question. Right. All we wanted was no, no, just let me learn. Let me learn. All we wanted was look on December 3rd, 2019. 
INEC visited us in our office. They came for an inspection. They gave us a, a very short notice, one week notice. We gathered all our escorts from all over Nigeria. They took the risk of getting on the road, the risk of risking their lives to come here. Now, we aced that, that inspection. We gave them everything they wanted. The, our, our, our statement of account, our audited account, everything they needed, they saw everything. Now, they did not communicate to us, so you, you, didn't, you failed in that interview. You failed in that inspection. The next thing was you went to the, okay. to the newspapers and, and, and the TV, and you said that you had you registered a party. Now, you have to understand that people have invested their life savings in some of these places. Okay, thank you so and much. And it is not right. If you've been doing it like Mr. that Fosua, before, can I, it can't fly Can I, can I, can I, can I cut in now? Thank you so much. Mr. Yekome, I just want us to maximize the time we have. Uh, now, he has raised two issues that I quickly want to bring to your notice. Number one, as much as it is clear that there are court of coordinate jurisdiction, which is another kettle of fish that we should be discussing, why we should be having court of the same level, having conflicting judgment. However, we're talking about the president of the appeal court, who is the chairperson of this panel. That's one. Don't you think we should take that judgment serious? Number two, let's look at the process of registration of these parties. People, I've heard some of uh, Mr. Faswa's friends saying that was like a trap. When you know we can't fulfill this requirement, why, do you, why did you register us in the first place? Thank you very much. Um, the first thing is that to INEC, there is no small party, there is no big party. Take the Edo governorship election that is coming up. There are 14 political parties. As far as we are concerned, every party stands a chance of winning that election. It depends on the individual parties what they do. Now, um, at the federal high court level, on this the registration matter, we've had six judgments, five in favor of INEC, one against. Now, at the court of appeal, remember, the court of appeal is higher than the federal high court. Now, we have one against, one uh, in our favor. What do we do? You know, Court of Appeal is superior to Federal High Court. And we felt that we cannot pick and choose. When issues like this come up, ordinarily it shouldn't come up, but it has come up. We have to go to the Supreme Court. If the Supreme Court, in its wisdom, decides that we should re-register the political party, so be it. But that interpretation has to be there. The insertion, that I mean, that fourth alteration is for a purpose. And one of the questions that I ask uh, these gentlemen when I see them is, you know, uh, you are not looking at the provision of the fourth alteration. You say we have been unfair, we have done this, but the fourth alteration is there. Uh, well, people have given different interpretations as to why political parties are formed, but I think that apart from having people of like mind and, and all of that, the purpose is also to win elections. And in Nigeria, there are extant rules. And if the rule says that, in order for you to remain relevant, you must win a seat in XYZ election or BY election and so on and so forth. And the regulating body, which is INEC now, is now mandated to take action against political parties that do not win election. So that is the issue. Now, all of the political parties that uh, went to court, they have not been able to tell Nigerians that they won any election, right? But have they gone was, through the three circles? I was, I was, have, but have they all gone through the three circles? The presidential, the governorship, the local government, like Mr. Faso raised? Have you allowed fan them? Fantastic. INEC does not conduct local government election for the states. You understand? Okay. INEC conducts local government election for the federal capital territory. Okay. And that only yastic we can use to make a decision. Now, as an aside, Mr. Fashwa knows, as all of them know, that at the local government level, all the local government elections that have taken place in this country, the ruling party wins 99.9%. So it's, it's like, sometimes it's unbelievable, the kind of argument they are putting up. Well, I can understand the investment, that's quite true. Uh, they invested money and all that. We don't pray for people to lose money. But we have this law slapped on us. And if we don't exercise that law, we could be called to question okay. again. So my, my, my appeal is that, you know, um, 
the, look, the 16 political parties that are remaining, they will, by, by 2023, when we have the general election, they will go through the same process. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Fasua, I, 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 I'm not the spokesperson of INEC, but I'm aware that uh, some parties are even in the process of being registered. They have never been registered before, so INEC can as well tell you that they have no problem with the number. It is about the law. Don't you think we should give them a benefit of doubt that this intention is about the law and not to victimize any party? We want, we want, yeah, we want INEC to stick with the law. Absolutely, stick with the law. The law does. Listen, the law does not permit a policeman to catch an armed robber and shoot him to death immediately on the spot. That is not the law. That is impunity. That is the difference. So the law says, if you catch an armed robber, rather than shoot him to death, arrest him, take him to a court of law. All right, and then let the cases be heard. And perhaps you have caught the wrong person. The law says that. One, one, it is better to free a thousand criminals than to, than, to, than to execute a single innocent person. That is what we want INEC to do. Simple. We are gentlemen and ladies in, in some of these parties. I may not be able to speak for all parties. They, INEC has the record of all parties. But a few of us have been, have been cheated. We have been robbed by INEC, mm -hmm. by the decisions. Again, I repeat, simple things. The, the, the law has... If we look at the letter of the law and even the, you see, the guys who went, they thought they were smart, who went and amended that constitution, they were trying to consolidate their position in APC. And some of them from PDP, Ekuremadu was one of the people who pushed that law. You see, listen, you cannot have disdain for the younger people of this country who have ideas and want to come into the political space by shutting them out. Mr. Rotimi said that 99% of elections are won at the local level by some of these parties, which ordinarily, well, uh, is, is my friend, so you know, I'll let that pass. However, the truth also is that, is, is, is that listen, we're working on probabilities here. What if I put all my party's resources in Ondo State, in my local government, in Akure South, in one ward, and I get my 25% in a, in a ward? You haven't given me that opportunity to get that 25% in that ward. That's what we're saying. And Ondo State is part of Nigeria. Edo State is part of Nigeria. As a matter of fact, those elections must be postponed. Okay. Because you have disenfranchised by an illegal act, Mr. according to the, uh, the, the, the appeal court, that Mr. your Fasua. action was illegal and ultra vias to the constitution okay. and Mr. even to, to, to even common sense. Mr. Faswa, so uh, those I'm... elections must be postponed so that we can get ready and also participate in those elections. That's Mr. the implication. Mr. Faswa, we we have... won them. I we... wrote more than 10 articles okay. on this, premium times in daily trust and all that. Okay, we have just uh, one and a half minutes to end this segment. So I'll give you. 45 seconds each. Do you think that this is a good judicial precedence for your party to get relisted? Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely bang on. And we're re relying on that. Listen, what the other parties have not done, they, listen, we're not supposed to be groveling to INEC to say, oh God, please give us our license. But a, a license you have damaged already? Okay. okay. On what basis do we rebuild the party? Which, which money? Whose money okay. do we use to rebuild the party? The momentum that we're getting. It is not done anywhere that you will not even in university. If a, if a, if a student flunks an exam, you give him a receipt. How okay. can you use register parties and then they conduct one election and then you deregister them with impunity? You don't even allow them to complete the cycle. Thank you, you so much. the cycle on your own, with your own, with your own interpretation, without interpreting the, the, what is now, Nigeria. Mr. Fasso, Nigeria your time is up. The six states and the federal <laughs> capital. Thank you so and much. And of course, the INEC itself is the one that supplies the electoral register to the local government. So you can't even say that you supply it to the, to the CX, to the state electoral okay, commission. Okay, thank you so much. You let, know, so let's... you still have a hand in those elections. Now, you have spent more than 45 seconds, so I'm going to be fair Sorry, to sir. Mr. Oyekomi mm. soon. So in one minute, how do you convince all the parties that you are an impartial judge, that you are not out to kill any parties that? Thank you very much. In every action that we take, uh, every time we design a policy, every time we take action, it is in compliance with extant rules, extant laws, and extant regulations. INEC has never gone outside the scope of law to act. And this is a very painful decision. I understand the passion. I've listened to several arguments by these political parties and all of that. But it's about qualification. It's about requirement. It's about what the law says. Now, uh, Mr. Faso, unfortunately, 
does not want to consult the National Assembly. But that, to me, is a mistake. Um, even if you don't like somebody and the person is in the position to help you, I think there's nothing wrong, even if for the sake of it, to hold a conversation with that, with that person. I think that even as we speak, INEC is consulting with the National Assembly. Whether we like it or not, they are the ones that can make laws. We are asking them to amend the relevant sections of the Constitution and the Electoral Act to make the electoral process more credible and, and you know, respond to the yearnings of Nigerians so that elections are more credible. That's the way it works. Now, if you don't want to do that, then how do you solve the problem? Judicial intervention sometimes may be a victory at some level, but the level, the, that, that may, be, may be knocked off later. So what I'm saying is that this deregistration issue is not targeted at any political party. Otherwise, the 16 political parties that are on the list now wouldn't be there. So my appeal is that, look, let's come together. The, there is nothing that cannot be discussed. You go to the National Assembly, they are representative of the people, take a look at this law. This law is not good. And the dis discussion continues. But you see, INEC has the responsibility to, to uh, you know, act on those aspects of okay. the law which it has been uh, mandated to Thank act you on. so much. And that's what we continue to do. Thank you so much, Mr. Rotimi Oyekomi, Chief Press Secretary to the INEC Chairman. And thank you, Mr. Tokwe Faswa. And we sincerely hope that there will be a time for you to jaw jaw rather than war war over this issue. Thank you for your time. We're still in war mode right now, <laughs> actually. <laughs> and thank, thank you for, for staying with us. That. Thank you so much. And thank you for staying with us. Our viewers will take a short break now. And when we return, Muslim rights concern, Murik, is accused of being sponsored by terror group. That is up next. We'll be right back after the break. <laughs> 